I've been playing this game long enough to remember when wolves were added, which was like 13 years ago. Oh, look at that. It was March 31st, 2011. And this is what they looked like before they were actually added into the game. Today is surely an historic moment in Minecraft history, because after such a long amount of time, the wolves have finally been given a fresh coat of fur. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video for 1.20.5. This is Snapshot 24W10A. We are going to make a whole bunch of new friends in this video today. And this is a great reason to be subscribed to the channel because, you know, you don't want to miss out on updates like this. It's what I do here on the channel covering the snapshots and Minecraft news, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Now let's find out about the eight new variants of wolves that are being added in this update. We are starting with the Snowy Wolf, a variant that spawns in the Grove Biome, a rare type that always walks alone. And if you need a reminder, the Grove Biome is this mountainous snowy terrain that appears on Minecraft's mountains. I was yet to find one of these roaming around on its own. I think that's what the article is hinting at here, that this is a wolf that only spawns on its own, as other ones spawn in packs. And all of the wolves we see today will have baby variants and be tameable with bones. And when looking into the game's files, I was reminded that the eyes of the wolves actually change when you tame them. Here we go. Look at that extra little pixels there. This, my friends, is the Striped Wolf, a variant that spawns in a new location for wolves, the Wooded Badlands Biome. They spawn in larger packs of between four and eight wolves at once. And I think what we'll do with each of these new wolves that we're checking out for the first time is we'll always be sure to tame one in this video. Next is the Spotted Wolf. This is a very vibrant breed right here, and it can be found in the Savannah Plateau biome in larger packs of four to eight. And once again, we'll give the doggy a bone and tame this fella right here. Here we have the Rusty Wolf, which can be found in the sparse jungle biome, this time in smaller packs of two to four. I must admit, I think these might be the cutest ones that I've seen so far. Next up is the Chestnut Wolf. This can be found in the old growth Spruce Tiaga biome. This is actually a location that wolves could spawn before, but now you'll find these ones in smaller packs of two to four. These are also adorable, which I think seems to be true of all of the wolves we've seen so far. Now we are in the old growth pine taiga, which is very similar to the last biome we were in. And this is where you can find the black wolf. Again, this is another location where wolves used to spawn. And these ones are in smaller packs of two to four. Let's see those cute eyes. Ah, oh, there they are. Then in our classic Minecraft forest biome, we have the woods wolf, a variant that spawns in the forest biome. This will be the dominant wolf variant that you'll be able to find in the overworld since the forest biome is very common. Let's go ahead and tame one of these friends. The last of our eight new friends that we're going to meet today is the Ashen Wolf. This variant spawns in the Snowy Taiga biome and the website doesn't specify the pack size that they spawn at. Anyway, let's go ahead and tame one of these. Oh, they're just so adorable. Now, if we step outside of this biome to the snowy plains, this is where you'll see our original wolf hanging out. But as you know, these no longer spawn in the forest biome. Their new home is the Tiaga biome, and they're now referred to as the Pale Wolf, a familiar wolf variant that now spawns in the Tiaga biome with a default pack size of four. So with all these changes for where wolves will now spawn, they're also able to spawn on coarse dirt and podzole. And in the grove biome, cows will no longer spawn. It's now just foxes, rabbits, and wolves. So we've been introduced to these new wolf variants, but now we're going to take a closer look at their textures. And I was going to do this by creating some no AI wolves and going past them one by one, but that was a little slow. And when editing this video, I actually found that renders of them have been uploaded to the wiki already. So I figured I would show you this and save you some time. We're also going to look at their texture files. This is the Ashen. The Black Wolf, followed by Chestnut. Then we have the Rusty variant, the Snowy variant. This one is quite obviously spotted. Then we have Striped, which reminds me of the Husk. And lastly, we have Woods. 
And those are the wolves. Now the conversation continues with you. Which one is your favorite and do you like these new variants? Be sure to discuss it down below in the comments. Now we are not done yet because this snapshot has more awesome for the 1.20.5 update. Now these are technical changes and they're mostly driven by the new stack components format which is driving a lot of changes under the hood. It affects many things and there's actually a lot of reading to do if this is your thing. If you're into making data packs, resource packs, custom stuff, you should definitely go and have a read of this as there are a lot of changes. The first two things I'm going to show you are possible thanks to Misode who sent me this data pack to show off what we can now do with the loom. We can actually add our own custom, I was going to say like crafting recipes, I think banner patterns would be the correct term. So if we scroll down here, you'll see, look, we've got our very own custom banner pattern. So with a resource pack and a data pack, it is now possible to add your own into the game. I will make a prediction that the Minecraft community will go absolutely wild with this and make lots of packs so you can add more banner designs to your banners. Another amazing feature of this snapshot is the ability to detect when a player is holding an item in their cursor, like, like this, lifted up. So we go ahead and activate this clock and I try and take some of these diamonds out. All I'm going to get is dirt. Although, yeah, I can actually, I can shift click them out, but you get the point, right? Look at this. And here is the command if you want to see it. At this point here, we specify the diamonds. And then later on in the command, we get to specify what to replace with it. Another possibility thanks to these changes is custom crafting with what we used to call MBT data being on the output of the crafting recipe. So for example, let's say you wanted the player to be able to craft a sword, but also use some other ingredients to give it an enchantment or additional information. You could now make a crafting recipe like this. That is a really powerful feature that map makers have been wanting for a long time. And I don't know if this is coming in the future, but currently it doesn't support having the additional information on this side of the crafting grid. So the recipe wouldn't know if it's looking for looting and unbreaking. Let's hope that that's coming in the future. I'll also mention this works with the smithing table and the stone cutter, and it works for both shaped and shapeless crafting. And next we have a little bit of Minecraft news that I'll be relatively brief about. This is for preview 1.20.80.20, which is bedrock edition of the game. And as it states here, coming soon, hardcore mode. You all know what this is. This is where if you die in the game, you lose your world. And yes, it's coming to bedrock edition in the near future. Also from the Minecraft website was an article about the glow squid. This had some strong suggestions in it, acknowledging that glow squid don't actually produce light, and then going on to say that Mojang's top physicists are currently investigating how this can happen. This, my friends, is quite possibly a hint that some sort of dynamic lighting might be coming to the game, and if they were to do this, I imagine they'd do it for both Bedrock and Java together, so we might see something like that in the future. And that, my friends, concludes my coverage of this amazing snapshot. I really think this was an incredibly cool addition. If you enjoyed my video, leave a like, subscribe to catch future snapshots, and I'll see you in a couple of days with an episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.